Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, this is probably going to be a, one of those contentious uh, videos because we're going to be discussing cutout fuses today. Um, I can hear everybody going, oh, God, no. Um, should you pull them? Should you not pull them? Who, who can pull them? Who can't pull them? Is it illegal? Is it a civil matter? I, I, I'm not. I'm not a lawyer, and I'm not going to get involved with any 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 of uh, any of that. Um, to be honest, um, the rules are pretty clear. Um, uh, electricians are not supposed to pull the cutout fuses uh, unless they have permission from the DNO um, to do so. You do risk prosecution. Um, I can't say whether it's a civil matter or it's a criminal matter. I don't know. Like I said, I'm not a lawyer. Uh, but there are many cases where electricians have been fined um, and in some cases have actually lost their competent person's status as well. So it does happen. Um, it's got more and more common, um, mainly because of the installation of smart meters. Um, when you've got the old um, mechanical system, there is actually no way the DNO can know that you've actually pulled the main fuse. But with the new smart meter systems, that's not the case. Um, effectively, the smart meter you know, if you pull the fuse, you turn, basically turn off the smart meter, which immediately alerts the DNO that power to a particular property has gone out. And if uh, there's no report of an electrical failure, they will and have sent out engineers straight away to find out what's going on. And the last thing you need to be is standing at the front door of a client's house, holding the cutout fuse in your arm, um, like a severed head, claiming it was there. It was like it when you got there. <laughs> they're not going to buy that are they anyway the point of this video is there are moves afoot um, there are moves afoot um, to actually make policy much clearer as to who can and can't do this and it's about time this has been going on since electricity was invented as to who can and can't do it whether it's illegal or not and everything but there are now moves afoot finally and to make this very clear um, who can and can't do it. Uh, and it's looking likely that maybe there'll be some policy coming out maybe in the spring of the new year, which should be great. Uh, it's well um, overdue. And we'll go through what it is that's going on here in a second. For those who um, are new into the electrical business or you know, you're just someone who's come onto the video just to you know, uh, be curious about um, can you or can't you do this, what is the cutout fuse? Well, I'll put a picture up. The cutout fuse normally sits in the meter cabinet of the property that you're working on. Um, be it domestic, commercial, whatever, it's exactly the same. The cutout fuse will be there. And it's on the incoming uh, supply. Now, it's normally rated 100 amps, 80 amps, or 63 amps. Most of the time in domestic properties, it's rated at 100. I do come across 80s and 63s, but most of the time it's 100s. Um, from that point on, the line the neutral head up to the meter, be it the old mechanical version or the new smart version, and then the meter tails then head off to the consumer unit. Now, everything up to and including the meter is the property of the DNO and or the electricity supplier. They are different. The DNO is part of the national grid and you pay your bills to your electricity supplier. Okay? Everything after the meter is the property of the customer and electricians can fiddle with that to their heart's content without a problem. Because the meter and everything heading back towards the transformer belongs to the DNO, that is why electricians are not allowed to tamper with them. It is actually a criminal offence to tamper with the electricity meter. And this is where it's a little bit confusing because is it then illegal, a criminal offence to tamper with the fuse and that's where all these confusions come into it um, the, the, the rules if you look at the, the, the rules and the law yes anything from the meter onwards you tamper with that you're in trouble it's as simple as that um, and like I say whether that's a criminal or civil matter that's for someone else with a higher pay grade than me to make a decision on that one now we come to safe work safe working in the safe working um, electricians are not supposed to work on anything that's live. Now, in the real world, that's actually not actually practically possible. However, 
Let me show you the Electricity at Work Regulations Act. So here we are. So let's scroll down this, and I think it's around. Uh, there we go. So here we are. Regulation 12. Um, if you look through that. Requires that there will be available simple means of ensuring that the supply will remain switched off and an inadvertent reconnection prevented. This is isolation, which you do your self isolation procedures for. This provision, in conjunction with safe working practices, will enable work to be carried out on electrical equipment without risk of it becoming live during the course of that work. Now, it goes on to say all the way down this document that where possible, you should always work on a dead system. And so you could argue, well, you can't if you can't isolate the supply into a house. If you're working on the consumer board, part of it is always going to be live if you can't isolate it. So you're going against the Health and Safety at Work Act. And some people are arguing that fact with the DNOs that there must be a way for an electrician to isolate the supply in a property to conform with the Health and Safety at Work Act. Otherwise, you're going against it. Right, so it is quite clear there in, in that document. Um, so now we'll come to what's going on in the background, and this is the naked document I got in the post this week. And in here, there's an article on page 22 concerning the changes to the... There are no procedures, actually formal procedures in place for the DNOs to operate to. So some DNOs will allow an electrician to take out the fuse if you ask them. Other DNOs will flatly refuse. Other DNOs will take months to send someone out to do it, and so on. So there's no clear guidance for anybody right now. Now, I've got to read this. So, a recent change proposal to the Distribution, Connection and Use of System Agreement, or DCUSA, aims to define a process detailing how a customer can obtain timely main supply electrical isolations to allow for safe working on their electrical installations. Effectively what that's meaning is that there is a proposal that's gone before this organisation to clearly define what you can and can't do. Now this proposal document proposes uh, three things. Now on the screen now I'm going to post the three um, proposals. And they are setting up a dedicated phone number with colleagues who know what is required when the removal and replacement of a service cutout fuse is requested so the process can be completed quickly and effectively, establishing a monitoring procedure to determine whether electricity providers are offering appointment dates within 10 business days and penalties for those who do not. And finally, the bit for us. Introduction of a procedure for the removal and replacement of service cutout fuses by competent, qualified and regularly assessed electrical installers. It's that last paragraph which is the interesting one for us. Now, for me, I think they're kind of barking up the wrong tree. What I personally would like to see, and I know a lot of electricians would see, is isolate switches put in as standard. I go to a house and I'm crossing my fingers that I'm going to be confronted with a house that actually has an isolator fitted. And when I open that meter box and I don't see one, I'm, I go, my heart sinks. I'm thinking, oh, 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 no. And it doesn't matter what house you go to, whether it's a house built in the 1930s or a house that was built two weeks ago, there's no rhyme or reason as to whether a fuse, uh, a cutout fuse and an isolator have been fitted or just the cutout fuse has been fitted. Ah, yeah, so... Um, it would be good if they could actually mandate that any, any and all new properties actually have an isolator fitted. And maybe these new rules that are coming in in the new year where all new properties have to have EV charging units in, well, in order to do that, you're going to have to have an isolator switch. You can't do it otherwise. Uh, not easily, anyway. Um, so hopefully, moving forward, you know, we're not going to see this problem. Um, but at least it's a step in the right direction and this is going before, before committee in April I believe if I remember the document correctly and um, hopefully it'll get passed and that'd be great 
uh, at least in all we need, and there'll be uh, my I, my guess is there'll be a mess of paperwork to fill in when you're doing this. My guess is that you'll find the DNO, they'll check your membership with this NIC, EIC or NAPI or whatever. They'll confirm that you you're, that you're part of a competent person scheme. They'll allow you to do it. You do your job. You connect it all back up again. Put, put the clips back in place. Probably take a photograph, fill a form in and then tend to tell the DNO that you're all done and dusted. That would be my guess. Fine. There is another complication though, because it isn't just down to the fact of, can I pull this fuse? Um, and getting into trouble. There is actually a risk involved in pulling this fuse. And uh, let me show you this actually really well written article about the risks of pulling the main fuse, of uh, pulling the cutout fuse. So this article was written on electricsontap.com, <coughs> and I think it's a very well written article. So they start off with right at the top here. It is illegal for an electric to re remove a main fuse when they've not been authorised to do so, and they put themselves at risk of being fined. Okay, we've covered that. However, they then go on to the risks involved in taking this out. So. Let's go down to this paragraph and read this one here. If an electrician has the authority to pull a fuse, then they'd be required to take a number of safety precautions. In most cases, when it's out, the live parts will be in the open with no barrier between them and the substation transformer. It is subsequently possible for there to be enough energy to light up the service cable and cause a fire. So that's the first thing. And yes, you take out the, um, the fuse and there'll be metal live parts inside, which you really don't want to be touching. Also, what happens if the fuse is stuck? If, in, yeah, if an electrician pulls it too forcibly, they can end up pulling the hold off the board. This could result in bare wires, and that would be horrendously dangerous. And no way to isolate them. None whatsoever. But this is an excellent, I think this is one where I think a lot of electricians don't realise it, especially in the older installations. Older installations used asbestos as part of their fuse carriers, even in the old um, fuse boards that you see. Um, they'll have asbestos in them, or can, or may have asbestos in them. And asbestos is only dangerous when it breaks, and then you've got, to, and then you might end up breathing it in. Not great. So. You know, normally you'd have to have plenty of protection if you're taking out a fuse that you're not sure whether it has asbestos in it. So it is actually, or can be, extremely dangerous to take out these fuses. Um, so let's come away from that. So, yeah, apart from the fact of, you know, you get in, into trouble and fined, you're actually putting your, you're putting your life at risk putting these fuses if you don't know what you're doing. Um, Okay, here's a question. Would I pull a fuse even if I was given authority to do so? I'll be honest, I'm not entirely sure I would because I've never pulled a main fuse and with the risks involved, is it worth it? Well, mm, this is where I'm expecting a pantomime of comments for and against all of this, to be honest. Um, a lot of electricians would just yank them out, other electricians would basically follow the rules of the letter and wouldn't bother and wouldn't do it. Um, if I was appraised of the situation regarding the views and the DNO would know that as to how old the installation is, if it, if there was any chance that that fuse had asbestos in it, I wouldn't touch it with a barge pole. I would make sure that someone came in first and that's exactly the same as if I'm doing a rewirable fuse board. If I had suspicions that that board was of an age that it did have, a, have asbestos in it, I'm actually legally obliged not only just to tell the client that there's asbestos in their house, but I have to report it. And someone who's trained in dealing with asbestos has to deal with it, uh, or at least be on hand in case anything goes wrong. Um, the rules on asbestos are incredibly tight. You do not want to muck with them, mess with them, sorry. Um, so anyway, hopefully, uh, we'll keep an eye on this, uh, and we'll see uh, where this goes. It's going to be very, very interesting to follow that in the, in the new year. Um, and hopefully it will get passed, hopefully the committee will pass it, and uh, then it, and uh, these procedures will come out. You know, it's probably take another six months after that, probably. 
Um, but at least then everybody knows where they stand. And if you want to phone up a DNO and take out the fuse, then if they allow you to do it, fine, they allow you to do it. Whether, you know, and then the risk is on you, isn't it, effectively? If um, you're pulling a fuse and it has asbestos in it, if it suddenly goes up in a cloud, cloud of dust, run for the hills. Um, anyway, so that's, I hope that's been helpful or useful uh, knowledge to know. Um, and we'll, uh, we'll see you on the, on the next video.